Hello everyone, thank you for joining us once again for a round of Scottish Gin. Um, we're getting into our stride and um, we're uh, delighted tonight to be joined by Emma and Neil from Ben and Turek, although I feel like I'm saying that wrong, I need to check with them if I'm saying that right, makers of Kintyre Gin. So um, they're based all the way down in um, Campbelltown, which is um, in K Kintyre, funnily enough. Part of our guy and they're on a tourist so, deal estate, are they? Yes, so we'll find out a bit more about uh, those guys. So, uh, are you there? Hello, how are yeah. you? Hi. How are you doing? We're good, how are you doing? Yeah, fine, just yeah, just you know, <laughs> hanging in, hanging in, in there. Yeah, lockdown's interesting. Um, yeah, I'm sure you're the same, absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> so, did I say it right there? How, how do you say Ben? Said it beautifully, did I? I think that's. Lovely pronunciation, Ben and that's how my Welsh dad says it actually, oh. Ben and Turk. Ben. Like, we just say Ben and Turk, but Ben and Turk sounds much more lyrical. Yeah. I'm obviously I'm obviously <laughs> trying to pronounce that you. I'm trying to get <laughs> that was lovely. So um yeah, so for those that don't know um about you guys, can you tell us a little bit? I know you're based on um Torresdale Estate, so can you tell us about that and how you came to establish the distillery? Yep. Do you wanna? Or? I can. Yeah. I mean, we. Um, yeah. Torresdale's part of. Well, it's been part of the family since. Um, whoa, what are we six generations now? Or oh, the kids are six generations. So, um, my family from originally from Campbelltown uh, on my father's side, and um, went into shipping in the early or mid 1800s, and um, six or ten of them, or six of them, or eight of them. I don't know how many. Lots of them. Were above, <laughs> born above a grocery shop in Camelton, three went to India with um, quite a famous um, Sir William McKinnon from here and founded the British India Shipping Line. Wow. Uh, made the fortune, came home. Uh, one of them ended up renting Torresdale. Another one bought another property on the other side of the peninsula and it was my great-grandfather, his son, that then bought, bought the castle and its grounds um, from the landlord who was renting it to them. So it's been in the family for, for, for many years and, you know, obviously there was previous wealth there, there's certainly... It's all gone. I can, I can assure you. There's, there's zilch, I mean, there's not not quite violent stage, but yeah. My debt doesn't quite equal his wealth when he died in today's money, but we're getting there. Yeah, Close to it. Um, and yeah, there's a bit of hill ground, there's a bit of woodland, there's some self-catering properties, but basically making money from it is, is tough. Mm -hmm unless we look at something else. So we built a hydroelectric scheme on the river five years ago, yeah. five years in October. And that generates a reasonable amount of money and actually helps us to borrow more. And it was about, about that time we thought, you know, what could we do, A, with the power? It was all going into the national grid and mainly still does. Yeah. And B, with the income we're driving <coughs> from it, what can we do to invest in the future? Because the tariffs on these renewable schemes are 20 years and in 20 years' time, we would have been thinking, shit, we should have done something uh, with, the, with, with the income. So yeah. that's when we came up with the idea of, in the neighboring building to the turbine house, we could create a, uh, we originally thought of beer. Okay. Maybe we could do a wee brewery. Um, and then gin was all the, or starting to take off. Mm -hmm. um, Harris had come online and some of the other guys, uh, and, and it was really beginning to grow. So the idea was born from that. Yeah. Yeah. Timing just made sense and we were really lucky actually I think with the timing because then there was a real kind of boom after that but we were sort of just, I think any later we would have probably struggled with funding, we would have struggled to sort of compete really but um, yeah. so so that was, yeah, that was yeah. good. So Ben and Turk, I should explain, means Hill of the Boar so that's why we've got some sporting our logo here um, which Neil had always thought would make a brilliant logo for something and as he said it was originally thought a beer a beer a brewery. I, I just wanted to sell something and call them uh, sell it in a bag and call it the boar bag yeah that's <laughs> our entire business is based on a ropey pun about a boar bag <laughs> Have that it's fact. not really. It's not really. <laughs> no. Looking in, I think we're tacky. Yeah. <laughs> I haven't actually done that yet either. Uh, I, know. Bag, yeah. I, I, I must admit, I do love your brand, though. Uh, you know your packaging and, yeah. and everything. And, and am I right? Thinking that your brother's your brother it helped out with yeah, that. My brother, brother Kenny, Kenny, he's got a business offshoot design. Yeah. He was based in Glasgow up until just recently, but um, he lives in Fife with his wife. And his wife and family run Luvians or own Luvians um, oh, drink right. shop and 
ice you know cream in St Andrews yeah. and uh, Cooper. So Vince is his father-in-law. Everyone will know Vince is listening in. There'll be a few messages. Um, <laughs> and um, um, so he did all our branding, but he's moved back to Fife now. So he still does it as a business, but from home. Yeah. And he created the, the branding. So it was a bit of a Dragon's Den moment. Kenny, okay. I'll give you 5% of the business if you do a branding. Not nah, 20. Okay, <laughs> 7. No, 20. Okay, 12. No, 20. Ah, oh, shit, 20. Right, okay. Yeah. <laughs> you actually paid a bit. No, so uh, anyway, so Kenny's part owner of the, of the business as right, well. Right, okay. Yeah. yeah, no, well, it is. The branding is beautiful. The bottles are all... Uh, lovely and you're really on point I always notice like well like you say with the with the um, t-shirts and the hats and the but even in the distillery you know you've put the um the board on the on the wall and everything haven't you so yes yeah we've got the so we're our distillery is based up at um, old farm buildings um and the the shop we always intended to be a tasting room it used to be an old cell it used to be a self-catering unit so it sort of slept 10 um, so it was the obvious place to put the shop and then our offices were, were next door. Yeah. So we got an interior designer in, um, what was the name of it? Oh, oh, well, Great Brink. Great Brink. Yeah, so he did this fantastic refit and really stunning um, using our own wood for lots of the features and put this sort of, it looks like a, a carved bore in cement. Yeah, it's gorgeous. It's actually yeah. Dull, really. yeah. yeah it's, on, it's on kind of MDF and then plastered over. I always ruin the magic by telling people that, but it just looks amazing. Um, so it's a really great backdrop. It's really got the wow factor when Absolutely. people come in, um, yeah. it's, which is lovely. Yeah. So. Yeah. And so, and that, and that table that's there, is that, is that made from wood on the estate, is it? Oh, that wow. Oak tree, yeah, that fell a few years ago. So that's been seasoned and uh, the, his, his craftsman worked. We cut it. Yeah, we cut we it. Cut wasn't, it. it didn't fall. We felled it. Yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> Well, we had we had a guy well we had a guy around and it was it was an ideal one for felling to make the furniture but we felled it about three years before we even thought of making gin or having a tasting room or using yeah. it mm -hmm. so we thought we'd just store it so we stored it and then we it's got it made into table. Again, it's, it gets a lot of attention yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. yeah we're just we're gutted we haven't been able to come and see you guys in fact we were like this close to booking all our Tri our trip our going coast. into to, to COVID, so it's maybe just as well we didn't because uh, uh, you might be stranded here. <laughs> exactly, we might be <laughs> face to face. Places, worst places to be stranded, but yeah, it's, it's just turned everybody's plans upside down. Absolutely, yeah. but given everything you guys have going on, it's uh, maybe good that we come and see you um, a bit later. So yes, there's yeah. lots of plans afoot. Yeah, so, yeah. 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 And development. So. Yeah. yeah, and obviously your your, your distillery and uh, I guess the estates went through a number of different changes. So, you know, what would you say were the milestones that you've achieved with the distillery? Um, I think we've done it quite gradually. You know, we started off with the main distillery for the first year, main building, which we converted, and then into year two we did the tasting room, and. So th both those are, are milestones, I would say, and we had it officially opened by um, Fergus Ewing, Cabinet Secretary for Rural Affairs and Tourism, or whatever he is, food and drink as well. Yeah. So um, he opened that in uh, August 2018, so that was kind of a year and a bit into it, but kind of two years into the project, so to speak. So getting it set up was a milestone, and then opening the tasting room and doing the tours, because we we're kind of massively, well, it, it was very difficult to predict how yeah. many people will get through the door for tours and the shop there, which has been huge. You know, it's amazing yeah. how many people are passing the door and have heard of us or haven't heard of us and are coming in, or even think we're whiskey, but we still managed to sell them. Quite a few think we're them. whiskey, and then yeah. their faces fall disappointment. But we convert, <laughs> we've converted a few. So yeah, that's, it's good. <laughs> so uh, those are milestones, and now now we're building the, the gin school and cafe. So once that's built and done, it'll be a, a milestone in itself. Yeah. Fantastic. What a, what a great attraction to have on mm. the estate as well. That you can come along, get get a tour of the, the, the distillery, but also take part in a gin school, try the products, learn more about about the area and the location. So you know that's, that's what Scottish gin should be about, mm -hmm. should it? Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, we've also got the accommodation as well, so it all just fits together really well. Yeah, um, and it's great for the area because you're bringing in more visitors generally. So. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, we've got a we've got a new start, Hannah. Well, I'll just let the cat out of the bag. Anyway, Hannah's joining us next week. I think it's a secret. <laughs> it's not a secret. <laughs> not announced it yet. And um, she's mm. going to be events tourism coordinator. So what we're going to do is try to integrate the whole estate with the, the gin school. Yep. So bring in the accommodation. So pop-up gin hotel. You can come, have your food, do a gin school, stay the night, stay two nights. 
we'll do whiskey tours in Campbelltown and things like that. So it's trying to broaden that whole offering yeah. and push the the tourism side of things when people are allowed to stand less than two meters apart. Um, yeah. well, we can now in England. <laughs> so we'll see what happens. Yeah. 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 Crazy. Yeah. 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 No, that's that's exciting. And so, um, you know, you mentioned about do whiskey tours. And we've seen some little Yeah, uh, we just saw a glimpses. snippet. I think it was just yesterday. Okay. Um, I think I literally quoted you as saying um, that there's the vague possibility of maybe one day producing whiskey. So um, what can you, are you, are you allowed to? Uh, well, Neil, actually, Neil oh, sure. didn't tell me he was going to post that. So it was a bit of a surprise. But yeah, I mean, I had seen the plans and we have talked about it. It seems the obvious sort of step. Yeah. So... Yeah, we've um, we've got a consultant working for us. Um, he's not long started. Um, just looking at specking up the other part of the disused buildings that we've got, and uh, looking at what equipment we can um, fit for the uh, and and do the business plan. So that's the first sort of six months phase, and then if that all comes to fruition or, or all looks good, then we'll we'll move into in the beginning of next year, getting consents and uh, p- planning and building warrants to to do the building work and buying the equipment and getting all the other consents we need. Um, but yeah, it'd be very much a small scale basis again. Yeah. I think I said in a press release, it'd be 15,000 litres per annum, pure alcohol. So I don't know, 150 casks, three casks a week. It's mm-hmm. so a small, um, but kind of high end. So we can integrate once again with the offering. So, mm-hmm. you know, maybe, maybe we will only sell it here. Or maybe we'll only sell it locally. We don't know yet, but we're not going to be mass producing and sending it yeah. to Taiwan and places like that. Obviously, you know, it will be very much niche and um, it's just another thing that we wanted to do and always thought of doing, but we started. We've done it the, wrong, the other way around. The other way around yeah. compared with some. So, you know, gin, then whiskey, who knows, rum next, maybe even a wee beer. I don't know. Yeah, uh, I, th- I think it's great to have these goals though and sort yeah. of keep, keep you... Uh, keep you on your toes and keep you focused on the future, I guess, you know? Yeah, I think it keeps you on the map as well mm. when you've got sort of fresh ideas. And um, I think as long as you do whatever you're doing well and to, to sort of the same high standard that, that you've set, I think that's really the, the kind of the main goal. Yeah, so. Absolutely. And so according to the wee drawing that I saw, that, that would just be literally on the end of the farmhouse that houses mm. the distillery at the moment, is that right? Right opposite. No, it's, it's opposite. Yeah. It's opposite. Oh, okay. So it wouldn't it wouldn't fit in where we are at the moment, but it would be um. It's literally. Yeah, it's sort of a, across the courtyard. So the stills would show in the window, and um, it would all be very much a good circular route for tours and things like that. And, uh, new building, yeah, but there's still, there's still a few hurdles to overcome. Not not least finance. So um, you know, it's going to be more than we spent to date on on the gin. So um. Yeah. We'll see. We'll see how that goes. Yeah, great, great legacy to create for the area as well. So yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, we've got what well, three? I mean, Camelton had over thirty whiskey distilleries. There's three in Camelton left, and um, you know we are right on, or we're out with the boundary according to Scottish mm-hmm. Whiskey Association in terms of Campbelltown as a oh. regionality um, for a malt. So the Campbelltown region in itself is the smallest region now. So we might actually be weirdly Highland. Highland. Okay. Uh, and and the most southerly Highland. So in a way, there's a wee marketing challenge there, but it's also co- possibly could work in our favour. Yeah, yeah. Right yeah, on the yeah. edge and by two miles. You know, we're two miles yeah. outside, and you know, could call it two mile, two know, mile whiskey. I, I don't think we would fight. To, <laughs> I don't think we would fight to disrupt that because I mean, Campbelltown is such a protected region, and that's how it's. I know you would. We would never want to kind of. You know, fight against that because yeah. you know, even if it's a bow hair as, as it really is, <laughs> yeah, we can maybe milk that for marketing purposes. Yeah, yeah. There's always an advantage. We wouldn't call it bow hair whiskey, we wouldn't though. Call it hair whiskey. <laughs> <laughs> we have a theme here. <laughs> oh dear. So I, I guess I mean I hate to say it, we've never been I down know. the west coast to Kintyre, not that far Campbelltown, and it is definitely on our list to mm. to, to come and see you guys it's and take a trip down there. Actually, yeah, yeah. But I, I guess what can visitors expect from you know a trip to Kintyre and Campbelltown? Just remoteness and beauty, and um, you, you can still see. I mean, the Highlands are often very crowded, and. Kintyre still kind of got that sort of remoteness. It's a bit un, less unknown, I suppose, mm. that works in its favour. And obviously, we do want to encourage as many visitors as possible, but we do want we want to kind of retain that charm it's got. Yeah. Um, yeah. 
it does it does almost have that island feel obviously we are mainland and we're sort of a, a thin um, land strip at the top but yeah I mean it's just absolutely stunning I'd never been before I met him um, mm. and yeah it's just blown blown me away and it's a fantastic place to live and bring up kids as well so everybody's it's quite a small population over a large area okay so you do tend to know absolutely everybody it takes you three hours to do your shopping and you have <laughs> to chat to everybody on every aisle which is which is lovely it's really really friendly um yeah it, it's it's great i really enjoy your um you know your dip in the sea just about daily oh, it is at the moment actually yeah it, it's it my just, kind of my sanity sanity kind of check at, yeah I just, I just think thing. that's the ultimate idyllic kind of like, you know, to be able to do that of a morning. That's, yeah. Um, yeah but I've got a pad and pull out the back of you. It's not quite the same. It's <laughs> not quite the same. <laughs> it is. And I didn't want to be, I didn't want to never, didn't want to ever take that for granted. Um, and I guess the swimming started a few years ago in the winter and it just, yeah. Neil thinks I talk about it far too much. <laughs> it's rolling his eyes. But... Um, <laughs> It's just become a thing, and it's just, it is. It's fantastic, and we've got it on our doorstep. So to not use it, I think would be would would just be a terrible shame. So yeah, yeah. yeah. And obviously, something that's in Campbelltown is your own your very own halls of Tam halls of Campbelltown now. Yeah. Um, so yeah. How did how did that? I guess it made sense, but how did that come about? What inspired you to set that up? Um, it, it was kind of a t two things we wanted. Um, with our shop in the distillery, we get a lot of passing trade, as I said before, and we've got kind of circular route round Kintyre, one road coming down, which is a B road, single track road from kind of Aaron side down. Right. And the other roads, A83 main trunk road. And, you know, there's a lot of people that come down, play golf, uh, go on whiskey tours that never come back up the east side. And there's a lot of the market we're missing out on as well. Camelton doesn't have a... It's got the supermarkets, but no other sort of independent drink shop. So we thought we'd kill two birds with one stone, um, sell gin mm -hmm. from there. But we didn't want to call it the Ben and Turk Distillery Shop or other things like that because we wanted to sell a wee bit more just as a, a fill up more for the locals as well. So we've got beer that we buy and um, wine we get from Kenny's father-in-law, Vince, and Luvians that we buy in from wholesale from him. So we've got a nice wee selection of wine as well. Yeah, okay. So we, we decided to call it something different. And my great 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 time something seven grandfather when he first moved from glasgow to camelton in 1804 or something had a shop he was a fleshier which is actually a butcher and then it sounds <laughs> something dodd, doesn't it <laughs> <laughs> um and, and general grocer and licensed mm -hmm. grocer whether it was called halls of camelton i don't know but we know where he was and we're not far away from that shop and it was just a, a nod to the past as it were yeah and that's been open since October of last year. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. No. I. I. Um. Yeah. The uh, the shop front and everything. I know. I know you had problems, but um. It, oh yeah. It was beautiful. Yeah. Look, it always looked. It looked really good. Um. But yeah. Was it something about the canopy? It was. Yeah. Uh, it's a it's a conservation area, and there was a there was a Dutch canopy and not a traditional canopy oh. up before. Like all the shops have a Dutch canopy and not a traditional <laughs> canopy. So all I did was change the colour of the original Dutch canopy which was funded by the council previously and mm -hmm. uh, I've since been told that um, it got refused consent so I've appealed to the Scottish government so I think that's going through at the moment so we'll see but uh, yeah. oh, it's just it's crazy it's crazy mm -hmm. yeah. red tape and small town politics really but yeah. yeah and no one agrees with it in the town it's just the planners sticking yeah. to the letter of the law and um I guess it's kind of sad, you know. There, there's you guys taking money, investing it in the town centre, mm. doing something with a doing something with a, a retail uh, mm -hmm. opportunity, mm. you know. And and you come up against these these challenges, you know. It's 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 you do, and uh, it's you know, counter needs as many retail opportunities mm -hmm. as we can get. It's, it's 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 massively improved from what it was twenty years ago, uh, and it will continue to improve. And you know, it's a good place to be, but you get these. Uh, Careful. Yeah, it, idiots. To be honest, <laughs> yeah. you know, I, I'm busting a gut to supply the council with hand sanitizer, but you know, they come. I mean, I know one shouldn't play against the other, but you know, yeah, yeah, just yeah. putting things into perspective. Why should I bother? You know, why yeah. should I bloody bother? But anyway, the good yeah. thing is, um, it was the amount of support and the people that came out in support of it, and you know, you really sort of find out the people have got your back, and again, that's yeah. that's kind of the Campbell time yeah. for you. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, and a lot of it should come down to common sense as well, should it? Mm. Let's not go yeah. there. Yeah, that's the problem, isn't it? We'll see. We'll yeah. see. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Good yeah. luck. And uh, so, what has um, 
sorry, I feel like that was out no, your question. No. <laughs> I do this. Martin says I hog, I hog all the questions. Um, what, what, so what has lockdown meant then? Because obviously you've talked about the various different businesses with the lodges and the and the shop and the and the distillery. So what's happened? Well, how is how have things been different? So we obviously closed the self catering. Um, when yeah, we we were a week ahead of actually because we knew it was going to happen, and we just made the decision we can't bring people into the area. And then obviously it all closed. Lockdown happened. Um, so that's been a very odd start to the season. Just mm. oh, haven't had a season. Um, we closed halls and actually we could have kept it open but there just wouldn't have been the footfall yeah um so we've kept that shut but we're going to open that um early july so that's that's very soon so um and same with the obviously we couldn't run the distillery tours but we were able to keep producing gin which was um good and moved into hand sanitizer as well yeah of course uh, yeah. yeah so and it's going to be ongoing maybe yeah. yeah and and the um i guess sales of gin have been pretty pretty good through lockdown yeah, for obvious yeah, reasons. I mean, just looking at the figures there, I mean, we're probably not actually much down in last year, um, to be brutally mm-hmm. honest. Um, I think April, I worked out that we were four times Christmas level online, you know, so that was great. That's a good boost. And uh, April, May, the trade was very, very quiet from from wholesalers buying, but May, late May, June to date has been, it's been good. There's yeah. a lot of orders coming in just this month from several of the wholesalers that, 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 that we sell into and a um, couple of exports to Denmark and one in the offing to Sweden as well. So those have been those have been good. Um, we're a wee bit down in last year in terms of number of bottles sold, but mm-hmm. um, that's probably attributable to the distillery not being open for, for tours yeah. only. So that's been good. <clears throat> yeah, that, I think all things considered, you know, that you haven't been able yeah, to open the doors to anyone, that's um, pretty good going, yeah, isn't it? Yeah. Just, yeah. Yeah. And, and, I, and I wonder if, to a certain degree, consumers' shopping habits have, have mm. changed as well. I mean, obviously, the, the, the sales online through websites have increased, mm. but, you know, because, I guess, people don't have access to a bottle shop or even get into the nearest pub, mm. they're maybe thinking, right, I want to order a gin. I'm just going to go direct to the person that makes it and buy it through their website. Yeah, and I think you've, you've almost got a cap, literally a captive audience because people are, you know, especially in the beginning, we're stu- really stuck at home. and. Yeah. So, yeah, I mean, it'll be it'll be interesting to see when things get back to normal if they ever do, what happens. Mm-hmm. But as soon as you put a discount on online, you know, it's oh, yeah. crazy. You know, yeah. everyone buying, and you can't do it too often because then once the wholesalers and the shops do open up, we've got to get back to a reasonable price. Yeah. Yeah. But I reckon we've introduced a lot more uh, people to Kintyre Gin yeah. through through discounts and online than we would have done before. Yeah. And hopefully they can stomach a slightly raised price once we do go back to normality and they find it in a shop and that'll increase mm-hmm. the brand awareness. So I think it's yeah. been that side of things has been good for business. Yeah. Because yeah. uh, you've, you've pretty much ran your free posted the whole whole lockdown, haven't you? Yeah. Yeah. Much, yeah. 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 And it's it was ten percent off. I and mean, we did fifteen percent in April just to get over that initial blip and that that was when it went crazy. And we could barely cook because half the staff are on furlough. So um, we, we've um, reduced that down again. So, yeah, it's um, it's been good from online sales. Yeah. That's good. It's positive to hear anyway. Yeah. And I guess, what, what are some of your proudest uh, Kintyre gin moments? <laughs> Gosh, thoughts. Um, it's always a good night at the gin awards, especially when you come away with one. Mm-hmm. So, um, and being voted Scotland's second favourite gin, so that's twice in a row now. Um that was good. We were actually in New Zealand this year when we found out, so that was exciting. And Neil, Neil pledged to get a tattoo if we podiumed. Oh, oh so really? The, the oh, wow. <laughs> he was going to get it on his bum, but then somebody pointed out you've got to sit on a plane for 28 hours to get home. So Brilliant. Good on so you. Know that, yeah. And on, yeah, bra- like, on brand. Like the public to vote for us, so <laughs> yeah, I get a exactly. tattoo in my ass, but I didn't. But you went, you went. <laughs> <laughs> didn't have enough so, ink. Um, yeah. So uh, yeah, I think that that's that's been great. Maybe we'll knock Harris off the top spot next year. <laughs> I don't know. I can't, I can't second as a win. <laughs> absolutely, yeah. absolutely, definitely. Yeah. Good. yeah. Um, yeah. The awards, but I mean, it's just ugh, achieving what we've done in terms of just building it, getting up and running, uh, getting community buy-in, um, yeah. and selling more than we thought. You know, our guess is we're not, we'll never sell huge, huge volumes because we're not set up. For that, and mm-hmm. um, we'll not sell into the mass discounters. I say that, but hopefully we <laughs> won't. Um, and you know, so so it's 
for our business model, yeah, I would say those are the main achievements. I think as well, being able to employ people from the local area, because yeah. that was always a massive aim for the company. And so we've got our distillery assistant who's from Campbelltown, Hannah, who's who's coming on. She's a Campbelltown lass. And, you know, there's a really high calibre of young people in the area, which is fantastic. Yeah. Um, and we know that from the interviews because, you know, we had we had a choice and it was a tough choice. Um, but, yeah, so that's really, really encouraging for especially for other businesses in the area because there is talent. And, yeah. Yeah, you want you want to keep it in your local area. Yeah, yeah, brilliant. Yeah. And so, I suppose just to conclude, um, my last question was pretty much how on earth you've maybe touched on with employment, maybe helps, but yeah, just how on earth do you run the estate, all these different businesses, and um, have a young family, and continue with your non-stop ambitious plans to to drive the business forward. <laughs> Uh, oh dear, I don't know. Lots of gin. Uh, yeah, lots, uh, lots of sleepless uh, nights. Yeah, God. <laughs> Quite the swimming, that's what keeps me sane. Um, and yeah, we just have to crack on with it and it just seems to work. We yeah. muddle along, I guess. It's, I don't think, I don't know, has anybody got an actual plan? But yeah. <laughs> Neil's very good at, he's a very, very good completer finisher. So I think that definitely helps. Whereas, but yeah. Well, yeah. That's who you are, you come up with. You do come up with ideas constantly, but you do actually see them through, which is yeah. kind of annoying as well, because I'm the opposite. <laughs> yeah, yeah we're, we're, for, for, for me, it was like taking over this place, you know, it was um, just oh, when the money ran out three generations ago, or whatever it was, you know, they pretty much did. And then obviously, it's kind of massive investment needed to bring it back up to what it was. And it's no fault of anyone's, but that's just the way it is. So kind of it's a gamble you know we're throwing everything on black or red and um mm-hmm. i'm boring to the hilt to be honest and um if it works it works if it doesn't yeah. it's sold and we're, we're out of here um, <laughs> to, to, to be brutal so you know um we may as well have fun while we're doing it but um yeah so we need to keep generating ideas and, and income and um um yeah it's, it's tough it's not easy but um we're just lucky it is where it is because especially you know being locked down somewhere like this is amazing and I'm constantly reminded especially by my younger sister that you've got nothing to moan about because you're living in a castle and you've got a gin distillery so <laughs> don't, don't come crying to me about anything uh, so yeah it's a lot of a lot of privilege checking going on yeah. Um, a lot, but yeah so and, 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 and obviously you've got an amazing husband as well well, you know, <laughs> you boys stick together. <laughs> well, I, th- I think on that note. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I don't want to say too much. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But thanks, thanks very much for taking the time to chat with us today. Uh, obviously, stay safe, yeah. and uh, hopefully, we'll see you at some point in the near future. Yeah, we'll definitely get that visit booked in when it's Let's all it. when it's all safe to do yeah. so. We're back yeah. to normal. Yeah. And we'll, yeah. we'll send you a bottle of our new orange and coffee liqueur when it's ready it's, next. Ooh, it's I was going to say next week in three weeks' time. Nice. Oh, it's really nice. Exciting. A guile roasted coffee. Yeah. Oof. Um, so we, we distill that and then um, add a, a nice orange syrup to it and get our orange liqueur. It's really good. Ooh, nice. well, oh, great. Oh, thanks for the nice heads up. And the, oh, that sounds exciting. It's not overly sugary. It's, yeah, it's you know, there's some nice. gloopy yeah. me, French muck out there. Well, it wasn't <laughs> French, but you know, yeah, there's yeah. some real uh, artificial. I'm never making a liqueur, and we're not doing this, Sue. We're not doing this, and then we hit on this idea, and it's you know, sugar content's right. You know, the coffee hint at the background is really because good because it's a local coffee roaster yeah. as well, which is really nice to work yes. with. That so so yeah, Colombian beans, but roasted in Tyner Brew. That sounds that sounds it's amazing. Like, it's like Colombia. Well, yeah, fu- funnily enough, I'm, I'm into Negronis at the moment and I've just discovered that adding a tiny touch of coffee to a Negroni, you know, like a co- or a coffee infused Negroni with that orange twist is like, so I can see how that would be an amazing um, combination. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, oh, yeah. very exciting. Yeah. Thanks for this, uh, the sneak peek then. We've got yes, an ex- Well, that was for sales, uh, you know, have to get that in. <laughs> No, but uh, seriously, guys, thanks very much. And uh, we'll see you on the oh. other side, I guess. Take care. See you. Hope so. Take see you later. Cheers. All the best. Cheers. Great. That was really good.
Oh, we got an exclusive there, I think, yeah. as well. So that sounds very interesting. Um, and a, a new product from those guys. But uh, yeah, no, genuinely excited to go and visit them when all this is over. Sounds like a beautiful part of the world. Um, so yeah. But thank you for joining us. Um, keep an eye on social media. Um, we've got plenty more of these um, chats coming up with um, lots of Scotland's gin makers. So stay tuned. All the best. Take care. Bye-bye. Stay safe. Cheers.